Hey guys, welcome back for another board repair. Um, I'm hoping you're, you're enjoying these these videos that we're putting up. They're fun to do, and I hope they're I hope you're learning something, and I hope you uh, can see kind of a glimpse of what we do here at Power Warp Medic uh, with the repairs. This morning we have um, a 12-inch MacBook. Now these machines, instead of being more like a laptop to me, they're more like an iPad, and I'll tell you the reason why. Uh, when you think of your iPad, how many inputs do you have into your iPad? Well, first of all, you have the uh, dock connector, uh, which not only powers your device, but in some, it's your headphone jack as well. It also transfers data back and forth between your computer and your iPad. And also, you have a headphone jack on your iPad. Well, on this unit here, we have our charger port, which also is an input and output device or a port so you can read your USBs off of this uh, with a little dongle like this and also you have a headphone jack it's a lot like an iPad to me uh, also this unit has no fan in it Apple and uh, designed these with no fan so um, if you're doing a lot of intensive work like uh, video editing photo editing uh, things like that your unit might get hot because uh, you're overworking that CPU. Uh, so these devices aren't really designed for stuff like that. This particular device was sent to us because it's not registering any USB device. Now it will charge, but it's not registering the USB. So what we're gonna do, I'll, I'll show you this real quick, how it is, it turns on, charges fine. Need the camera down for you. So here we've gone to our option screen, hold down the option key, and we can choose an imp or a boot up device. So first of all, I have here, uh, it's like a, a meter, amp meter, that we have our USB-C charger plugged into. And this allows us to see if we're getting the correct power input. Let's see, it, it, boot, it, it'll boot up here. And it shows you like the voltage which you're, you're supposed to get around 19 volts 19 to 20 volts and a, around one or more amps when you're charging and you can see here that that is working fine it is charging correctly however when you plug in our dongle here with a USB it's not registering anything on the screen to boot up into and uh, this was an interesting thing to figure out. Uh, first of all, when you think of this port, uh, you have multiple uses for this port. You have it charging, you have data coming in and out. Um, Apple has designed this USB-C port to do multiple things. So when you plug in a charger, of course it's not going to register it as a USB device and try to read any data off of it. But when you plug in your USB device, it's not going to think it's a charger and try to get charge from it. No, it's going to actually want to send power to your USB device to um, power it up and then it's going to want to uh, transfer data back and forth. So how does it do that? Well, it's a, it's, it's a thing called multiplexing. And if you think of it like this, I'll show you a picture here. If you think of it like uh, a long time ago, these switchboards, uh, you would have one person transferring different signals, different directions from this one device. So that's the same thing with this type of machine. You have one input and you're wanting the um, input to be sent to different directions to do different things. So this multiplexing is what it's called um, on or muxing. Uh, I'll show you this on the schematics. Uh, here we have the schematics for this board and you see here on page 26, 27 here on the contents you have low speed muxing, high speed muxing. Uh, well this particular situation is going to be your high speed muxing. Let's go to page 27 here and you'll see here it has USB 3 external. Um, this is your inputs and you're also uh, this is what you're getting power to and from and also up here on the low speed you have your USB external um, uh, ins and outs like this comes uh, this is bi-directional 
so that you're having input in, in and out. However, we're not getting any power at all to the USB. So here in the high speed, we're gonna go ahead and change this chip to see if this fixes the problem. So this is our U4520 chip. This is a MUX chip, which is your multiplexer, which sends, it's kind of like that switchboard, it's sending the signals in different directions. So let's go to our board view. Right here is our board. And we're going to type in that U4520. So that's located here on the board, up here by where this, uh, this is the E85 port, which is what the port that the, uh, the charger, uh, it's this port, this port here. This is your USB-C port. So that's where everything comes in. And then it goes to these two chips here, which is your mult, uh, your MUX chips. And that's gonna send your signal in different directions. So first we're gonna try replacing this U4520 chip, uh, which hopefully that's the problem. Hopefully that resolves it. If not, we can do some more diagnosing. Uh, this chip here even goes into your USB um, external, uh, de dealing with the USB device as well. But since we're not getting any power or anything to the USB drive, I'm going to try replacing this chip first. So I'm going to remove the board, and I'll meet you over here at the microscope in here in just a minute when I get the board out. All right, so here we are. We have our board removed, and we're going to look at this under the microscope. All right, so here you see what we were looking at in the board view. I'll show you that again real quick. So we have our port, our USB-C port, which everything comes in, and then we have our two MUX chips. And we're going to try replacing this with the U4520. So you can see that there, how it matches up. And here's our chip right here that we're going to try replacing. Now this is a BGA chip, but fortunately the, the solder balls are so small underneath we can probably replace this without having to reball uh, the BGA chip. So first, if you add, I've discussed this with you, if you add heat to this area, you run a high chance of damaging these ports because these are plastic. These will melt. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put some uh, captain tape on top of these ports and just kind of make a uh, just surround this area with the captain tape so we don't damage any of these capacitors, uh, these ports, and we keep everything safe. We don't want to have to do more work than we have to. So this captain tape is heat resistant and it is um, an anti-static tape. And I'm just going to cut off some pieces of it and tape it to the board. Just kind of square that area off. couple more. Okay. Alright, we still in focus. Pretty good. Okay. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and heat up that board and we're going to remove that chip. And here, like I said, I have a, a scrap board with this chip on it and we're gonna just transfer that over and replace it. So again, I'm adding, when I'm adding heat, I'm still not gonna aim it towards these ports. I'm gonna aim it away from them. Uh, the tape will safeguard them, but we don't want to add any more heat to the area than we have to. Okay. You see there's still solder on these pads. 
I'm going to leave that there. I'll leave the solder on the pads because we don't want to take away or put more solder than we have to on these uh, on these um, BGA chips. So I'm going to add some flux to it and flow it again to make the solder go down, form little um, solder balls on top of these pads. getting it prepared for our new replacement BGA chip. So you see how they're all shiny now? Nice and even. So now, I'm going to take some flux. Move the camera so you can see what I'm doing here. Alright, so I'm gonna, here's the replacement board. I'm going to add some flux to that chip. And I'm going to aim this away from those ports. All right, have the chip. So now, before I put that on, I want to put a little bit more flux on the board here. I'm going to line this up, and you can kind of line it up with the chip below, but it has hair on it. There we go. Alright, so we're going to line this up. Like that. Heat it up, and watch it flow into place. You can tell when you have it heated up because it doesn't move anymore. So now we're going to add a little bit more flux. And you'll see when it flows into place it'll actually move. And that's how you tell that it's... No, you see how it moved into place? Alright, so we are good. And now, I'm going to clean the board off, clean the flux off, and uh, get it ready to put back uh, into the machine and see if we can read anything with the USB drive now. So we're going to let it cool off, and there we go, let it cool off, and then uh, put an ultrasonic cleaner, clean all the flux off, and get it installed back in the unit, and we'll check it out. See you in just a moment. Okay. So we have the board installed back into our unit, so we're going to power it on and see what we get. Hold down the option key, it comes up to this menu. So now we're going to take our dongle and our USB drive and see if we get anything. Oh, there we go. It powered on, it reads all the USB. Um, it reads the USB devices as well as all the partitions that I have on here and um, so it's good to go. I'm going to go ahead and boot it up into it and make sure it's all working fine but it's reading the USB drive now which is not what it was doing while ago. So we are good to go on this one. It was that high speed uh, MUX chip. Uh, so like I said this is kind of like those MUX chips are like kind of like a switchboard uh, when you get uh, input into this one port you're going to have to have uh, that signal transferred into different directions and those MUX chips are what does that. It's kind of like that switchboard uh, from many ages ago when uh, you would plug in the different areas to send the phone calls to different areas. So um, we're good to go. We fixed this board. Hope you learned something and I hope you have a great day.